Hey guys and welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over world composition. So now it's not much to look at straight away like that, it's more about what's going on behind the scenes and optimizing your game and stuff like that and also be showing you kind of basic level streaming as well. The level streaming isn't too much but obviously you get the basics of it in which you can adapt further on. So you can see we have our landscape here, again I haven't done anything really, I've just made some mountains in the corners to show you it loading and unloading and you can see we have our minimap here of our world composition. So this one landscape is actually made up of four different levels and that is again to help with optimization. So if we get in, we can hit play, you can see we're in the middle so all of them are loaded. If I just start running over here, that is going to unload over there. So you can see we've got further away, it's unloaded. You probably wouldn't want it this close since we're still very close to it, but I've just made it a small distance just to show you in this short period here for the purposes of the tutorial. But like I say, this is what we're going to be doing today, just setting up the world composition then I might do a more in-depth level streaming tutorial later on in the future, but we are going to be setting up level streaming today as well. So let me delete all this and I'll show you how I've done it. So you can see here I'm just in an empty map. So now you don't have to have it empty, but you don't really want to have any other levels here. So when we create world composition, we can't have any sub-levels, we just need to have this one level. So you can see here I'm just in mine called main map or persistent level, anything like that, but it's completely empty for me. What we want to do while we're in here is you want to go to world settings over the right here. Now you might have details, you just go to world settings, or if you don't have it, you go to windows up in the top left, and then go down until you find world settings there, hit that, and you get taken to the world settings here. Once you're here, what we want to do is we want to enable world composition. So this is under world, so we have enable world composition, we're just going to tick that like so. Again, make sure you don't have any sub-levels already created, because now we're going to create those sub-levels. So you see here I have folders for my maps, I have my main map there and I have sub levels. You don't need to do that, but I just like to do it to keep it nice and organized. So this main map is the persistent level, which is what is always loaded. So this is good for light sources, collision, stuff like that. And then sub levels is the other stuff which you want to load in separately, which is again good for the optimization part. So to make the new levels, we're going to go to window and then we're going to select levels there. And now you can see we have it here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dock it over to the right of world settings here. So we have on the right of our screen instead of just the middle. Again, you don't need to do that, but it's just nice and helpful like so. And then once you've done that, we're going to create a new one by selecting the levels there, going to drop down menu, and hitting create new. And now you see I have mine in my maps, sub levels. I'm just going to call this one level one. You can name this absolutely whatever you like, but level one makes the most sense for me. And you can see here the persistent level is blue because that is our current level that we are in. Level one is kind of grayed out because we haven't got it as a current level and it isn't loaded. So we can right click and we can just load that like so. And you can see in the bottom right we have level main map persistent as that's the level we have loaded but obviously nothing else is here because we loaded it but we don't have anything in it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually create the landscape. So to do that we're going to right click on our level one or the map you just made and we're going to make that current as we want to put the landscape in this level here not in our persistent level. And so once you've got that as current so it should be blue like that we're going to go to modes landscape and we're just going to make a simple landscape. I'm going to make mine about 15 by 15 so it's about 250 meters by 250 meters and you can see that in the overall resolution there. That's the size of meters. So I'm going to make mine this big and I'm going to set it to the grass material and hit create. And you can see we just have this very basic landscape here. And what I can do is I can make the persistent level current again and if I right click on level 1 and unload you see we get this error here saying you're about to unload dirty levels from the world. What this basically means is we haven't saved it. So I'm just going to press no, save all by control shift s. Now if I unload it, this should be a lot better. There we go. And you can see we unloaded it and that landscape is gone as the landscape was on that level. So if we load it again, it's going to come back like so. So when you load up your game and you don't see any levels, don't worry. You just need to make sure you load them in. So again, when you load up the engine, make sure to load the levels as well. Now what we can do is you see here on our levels tab again we have the summon levels details and summons world composition if we click summons world composition you see we get this mini map here this is our map of our landscape and this little arrow here is the player so or the camera sorry so as we move around it's going to move in there as well so that's great so now a very easy way to just add more landscapes onto here and add more worlds and add more levels is we just right click on our level which I'll move it to here so I want to have four so that's another thing as well actually. You can move this in here and it will move it in the game like so. So if I just move around, I can just move it in here like that. So I want to move it here as this cross point here is the world origin. 
I want to be here so I can have a square around it like so. I'm going to right click on the landscape there. I'm going to add adjacent landscape level and I'm going to add it on the positive X. So it's to the right of this landscape as you can see by that arrow there. Hit that, give it a name, so level two, save it where you want. And you can see we have a new landscape there. So that worked perfectly. We now have two there like so. Very simple, very easy to do. There is no gap between them. This is where it joins and it's seamless like so. Like I say, I want to add four. So we're going to right click on this again, add adjacent landscape level plus Y, level three, and we have it there. Right click, add adjacent landscape layer, positive X, and it is this simple. This is how you add a lot more levels to your landscape like so. So again, you want to start off with world composition before doing all of your level design as this is how you would do it. Otherwise your landscape isn't going to be divided into the world composition and it won't work properly for you. So this is how we've done it. Now you can see we have this very simple landscape here. And this will still work perfectly with our landscape tool as well. So you can see this is where we'd have the lines, this cross here, where well, you can't see it, which is the point, it's perfectly seamless. And again, I'll show you it being seamless with that as well. So we go to modes, landscape, I'm just gonna create some simple mountains. So we, it would be here, straight down the middle. So what I'm gonna do is just put this up a bit here. And you can see it works on both of the different levels. So this is a level, this is a level, this is going directly across it like so and still working perfectly for us and it's smooth and it works great. So obviously this isn't a great landscape, it's just very simple to show you how it works. I'm just literally putting the brush on there like so. And again, if we go back into our mini map, this should update on here as well. And this hasn't updated just yet, so what I'm gonna do is just unload and load these levels. So I'm just gonna select them all by selecting the top one, holding shift and selecting the bottom one, right click, unload, or actually I should save first then unload them and again you'll see these will just disappear as we no longer have them loaded meaning the engine isn't trying to load them and lagging if you have a lot right click load we get them all back so that still works perfectly if we go back to our world composition map you see that's now updated we have this landscape on here like so you might not need to unload and load for it to update it sometimes just takes a while but that's a quick way to force it to refresh so again these are two different levels but we have it perfectly like so and now you saw i got a little error there that's just because I accidentally moved it up. Now that works. So again, you can select all these and move them all at the same time, like so. And again, two different levels, but they work seamlessly, like so. And that is the basics of world composition done. What we've done is we've just created new levels here, and we can seamlessly merge them and put different levels on them and create new ones to expand the map as much as we want. And a good thing about world composition is it allows more than one designer to work on a map at a time. So normally, if you just use one level, only one level designer can work on it. But you see here we have four separate levels. So we can have four separate level designers working on each one. We have someone working here, someone working here, someone working here, and someone working here. Obviously on a much larger scale, this is more efficient, but this is great for that. So we can have multiple people working on it at the same time. And one other thing I'll say is when we right click, we can add new. You might be wondering what's the maximum size? Well, it's quite big. If you scroll all the way out, you'll see we have this orange box here. This is the maximum size we can work on. So you can see this is quite big. Up here at the top left, we have a scale. Let's get this to six kilometers. Let's see what this is. I forgot the exact number. I think it's 20, but I can't remember. So that's six, 12, 18. Yeah, it's about 20 by 20 kilometers is the maximum size you can get up to, which is very big. And also if you want to go bigger than that, you can just scale everything down. If you scale down the player, then everything else becomes bigger relatively and you have more scale and you have more size, more area to work with. Again, you probably won't even reach that point of it being that large, but this works perfectly for what we want to do. So now I'll show you how to set up a basic level streaming. So you saw at the start, if I walked far enough away, a certain area of landscape would unload. I'll show you how to do that now. And like I say, I'll do a more in-depth level streaming video in the future. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the plus layers up here. We have uncategorized, we're gonna hit plus there and this is the streaming distance. So I'm gonna rename this to be SD for streaming distance and then I'll underscore and put 10 or 10K. So SD 10K as I want this to be the streaming distance of 10,000. So I'll then also change the streaming distance to be 10,000 and then I'll hit create. Now you see we have that layer there. If you go into it, there's nothing in here as we don't have anything in this layer yet. So go back into uncategorize, which is the default streaming distance of 50,000. What we'll do is we can select all these levels by holding shift and clicking on them all. Right click on one of them, and we're going to assign to layer SD10K. And then you can see they've gone out of here, 
we go to SD's 10k, they are now in this level, or in this layer, sorry. So now these will unload after the player's gone 10,000 units away. So they'll only load in at 10,000 or closer. So if we close this, we can hit play to test it. So you can see we're in here, we have these levels, we're walking between four different levels here perfectly. Also, I've just upped my player speed just to walk around this a bit faster, by the way, just for the purpose of the tutorial. So this is level one, level two, level three, level four. There is no difference in the player going between them. The world composition works perfectly and seamlessly there. So now if we go far enough away, this should unload. So there you go, that's now unloaded over there. If we just keep going far away, that one might unload. I'm not sure if I can get far enough away. There you go, yeah. So now we're only on this one here. We keep going, it will load back in like so. So again, this works a lot better on larger landscapes and larger areas, and you wouldn't want it this close, but this does work perfectly. So we can unload and load areas depending on the distance player, which again is great for optimization, especially if you're working on really large maps. So I just ran off the edge there by accident. Again, if you're working on massive maps, you don't want it all loaded in at the same time. This is perfect for that. So that is essentially it. I've shown you the basics of setting up world composition and the basics of the level streaming distance in there as well. So again, we have this mini map of all the different ones. Very easy to add to. We can just right click, add adjacent landscape level, put it where we want, give it a name, and now we have it in there. And again, we can easily see it there. There it is, and we can easily add onto this as well. So we can paint our landscape and or anything we want on here, like so. Very easy, very efficient, very good for us. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. If you don't have anything you want to do, like I just went over, we've set up our world composition and level streaming, which is great for efficiency in your game. And we've set up these different streaming distances here. So you can see ST10K is this original four we made. And this new one is uncategorized. So we can just right click, assign to layer, SD10K like so. So again, I'll be doing a more in-depth level streaming video. But if you have any queries on this, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be happy to help. But again, basics out of the way and done. Great for you to be setting up, working with other people on level designs or just general optimization, stuff like that. I don't know if I'm getting a bit repetitive at the end here, but you get the idea. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.